is if you have a small crack, you want to spray a large area. And that helps you feather your edge. It's kind of like doing sheetrock um, or drywall or anything where you got to... The bigger the area, the easier it is to feather it and hide it. Hide the shine into where it's sanded. With this side of it, I'm a little closer than I want to be. Roughly, I usually go about two inches larger than what it should be. So I'm actually going to move my tape line back here and give myself a little more room when I spray. And it's pretty important to protect your seam because you don't want to spray yellow and then have to come back and spray black. is to get it over your boat. I like to go, you know, three or four feet either side. Definitely make sure you're covered on this side because I'm spraying this direction while my overspray is going this way. At this point I can see my repair. Just take my scissors and I cut in, you know, depending on your tape, depending on how good you are, with scissors. I usually go about a half inch in. repair. You want to make sure you get all your edges. Uh, it is a LPHV, which is low pressure, high volume gun. Um, it's all adjustable in the tip. Great thing you can get really cheap at any hardware store is what's called a pre-valve. Um, most hardware stores have them. If they don't have them, a Paint supply store will have it. Um, they're great because they turn a regular cup of gel coat or paint or anything into an aerosol spray bottle. To spray it, you get a much more even finish. It's going to save you time sanding. It's going to save you time buffing, polishing, everything. Um, you only have a certain amount of time here at Lincoln. You get about 12 minutes before it starts to gel. Um, very important you wear a mask, a good mask, not just a little doctor's office mask, because if the fumes can creep in, they're going to creep in. When I initially start to spray, I'm going to fan over the direct area of my repair, and then make sure I'm getting coverage on that, and then I'm going to slowly kind of back my gun away, and that way it feathers it out that little more. You want the area you're sanding to be thicker than the edge of your repair. Not only because you've already sanded through this, but when you get out here to the edge, you have to wet sand that. And if you have a quarter inch lip or even an eighth inch lip, it's gonna take you all day to sand through that. And more than likely, you're gonna sand through this edge before you get this sanded down. the gun you don't want to pay me time to do this three times I usually just go heavy and then take my time sanding it in that way I don't have to spray three or four times our customers don't have to pay three or four times and it's just that much quicker and you don't have a bunch of different pieces roll it up right next to it and lift straight up and evenly pull away. If you have multiple pieces, you run the risk of whacking your gel coat, and then you'll basically have to sand and respray because at this point there's no touching up. Um, you want to make sure you peel all your tape away from your gel coat edge because as the gel coat reacts or kicks, it creates heat which will melt the glue on your tape next to the gel coat, which will contaminate your gel coat, which it might not kick or cure as well as it should. If you look, using the tape, 
our happy little sanded edges. We kept the repair contained to a very small area, very even area. You want to let this air dry um, long enough to where you don't want to be tacky, you don't want it to have any shine. It wants to be a dull finish and that way you can come back and start your sanding. Normally it takes four to six hours depending on temperature. The whole goal of this is to start with a rough grit and then go to the next grit and then go to the next grit. And here we go all the way up to 1200 um, just because we like to get as close to a factory shine as we can get. It's really, really hard to get back to that factory shine, but you can get very, very, very close. Um, and it's only difficult to do that because if this boat sits in the sun, you're going to get fade on the yellow or whatever color it might be. Not to mention, this boat was made in a mold. That mold has got a perfect high gloss to it. So what we're doing with sandpaper is almost impossible to regain. When you're looking at this gel coat, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it looks almost orange peely. When you're sanding, it's all gonna look smooth after you start to sand, but it's not an actual smooth surface. So what I do is I take my Sharpie and I outline my thing. I repair to where my new gel coat meets the old gel coat. Now that's my edge outline. What that gives me is as I'm sanding, I want to sand to my edge, but I know with my black marker when that starts to disappear, I've sanded plenty far enough. So I don't want to over sand that outside edge because I'll get what's almost like a small ditch or a trough in there. Then I'm going to continue my marker across the whole thing. And basically what this gives me, when my marker's gone, I'm done with that grit. I can step up to the next grit. I tend to smudge it, it gives me a little more coverage. Water bottle, you can use a spray bottle. I use an old Gatorade bottle, drill a hole in the bottom of it, or in the cap of it, and it gives me a little squirt. I like to use smaller pieces of sandpaper, only because you can control where the edge of your sandpaper is. If I'm sanding this and I get a big piece, it's likely to scratch up here. So I use a small piece, and you just go for it. And you're basically, as soon as your paper starts to stick, wet it again. Kind of notice, I'm not really going real far over my repair because I don't want to sand this area. Obviously you're going to scratch it a little bit, but I don't want to sand here as much as I want to sand here. So I'm concentrating most of my sanding to that area. And you'll notice, the marker disappears. And I'm basically going to repeat that same thing four more times, five more times, depending on how heavy into the grits you want to get. Um, you gradually want to step down between your grits, starting at 400, going to 600, going to 800, going to 1000. And we go up to 1200 here. You can clearly go up to way more than that. I think you can get up to like 2700 or something like that. It's all on how far you want to go. The one thing I want you to keep in mind is the further, the finer the grit you get to, the longer the strokes you want to do over the thing. Because if you just concentrate with the fine grit, again, you're going to amplify that trough right there. And that's what you're trying to avoid.